welcome to Paya. Um, this is our Alamai exhibit, which was done in uh, collaboration with We Rise LA and the Arts Council of Long Beach and uh, through uh, Paya. And We Rise LA is a mental health awareness and well-being campaign um, through the County of Los Angeles and uh, it, it's for the entire month of May and there's a lot of different activities happening around the city and the county. So this is the first time that it's out here in the South Bay and Long Beach and so for our participation we wanted to do an outdoor art exhibit during the time of COVID the museum was closed, but we were able to have this exhibit outside on our outer fence so that the public had access to our pieces. So this piece right here is um, inspired by um, a scholar and author uh, from Tonga. His name is Epeli Haufa. And uh, let's see. Oceania is us. That's what's in the background. And then this is a quote from one of his essays. We should not be defined by the smallness of our islands, but in the greatness of our ocean. We are the sea, we are the ocean. Oceania is us. So we got a kind of a mix of different island patterns from around the Pacific. And uh, kind of feature Miami's bird in the sky and then Big Bad Bad Island down there as a symbol of resilience and hope. And we got different motifs here. Uh, one, this one is the uh, Laddie Stone um, from Guam. So, uh, yeah, just kind of representing our ocean, our, our culture with some gold in there. And I, I wanted to put gold in all the pieces that I did out here, so um, you'll see that as a feature. And this style right here is reminiscent of like our tapa pieces. Uh, and uh, so kind of like similar to what you see with our Fiji and Masi. It's called Rest. And uh, Auntie Fran gave me the inspiration for this. And because our, our theme is on uh, mental health, one of our themes is mental health awareness, rest is something that is really important for our well-being. And for me, it's something that I've been trying to make you know, much more uh, of a priority. I think everyone needs to, you know. I think life kind of moves so fast. We're trying to get so much done, especially living here in Southern California, and uh, you know, this kind of gets pushed to the bottom of our priority list. And so you got the phases of the moon, kind of uh, alluding to nighttime, and and then the the, the sunset, kind of fading into the twilight, just kind of bringing that real calming, calming, uh, vibr you know, uh, feeling. So I didn't want, so I didn't want it to get too busy in the background, but kind of added this, this uh, floral pattern, floral image in the background, just real subtle, to kind of keeping our island theme. And someone actually tagged on this piece right across the top. <laughs> and then I came in the next day and just repainted it. <laughs> but uh, actually I like it better now because you can kind of see the top and stuff. But yeah, so that's one of the things too is behind each piece we put a note to kind of uh, go with the piece and I'll, I'll touch on that just in case that they are stolen or taken or if someone writes on it or 
and vandalized it and you know we know that it's it's part of being outside part of being in this part of the city and that that's going to happen so you know we understand that and it's by one of my favorite artists Christelle who I uh, asked if she can participate in our We Rise uh, exhibit and she was uh, glad to oblige and we also asked if she can uh, provide a statement about her piece so I'm going to go ahead and read that here. Love is stored in the cat. It's been said that cats purr to promote healing. The vibrations of their purring is thought to physically help speed up recovery. Sometimes they'll purr on their friends too. I'd like to think my cat friend is trying to heal me and she purrs on me every morning when I wake up. I like to share photos of her on my social media often to document this part of my life in a world during a pandemic. I've really learned to appreciate the small things in the past year, like her meowing at me to feed her or her kneading on my legs when I was asleep. I, it was a lot of small things I appreciated to brighten my days when bad news seemed to pour in. A friend I hadn't spoken to in years reached out to me and said that photos of my cat make her really happy. I know she lost a loved one to COVID-19. I think she tries to hold on to the small things too. Whenever I share a picture of my cat, I hope this friend sees it and that it makes her happy. I hope it offers joy to anyone who needs it. Thank you, my friend. And Grisel's piece here has gotten the most response in my experience in talking to people today. But people really gravitate towards this piece from little kids to adults walking by and People yelling from their car. Who made that? Who did that? I love that one. That's my favorite one. Yes, people have yelled from their cars while they're waiting for the traffic light. And so um, that's always cool to hear. And, and it's just a beautiful piece. And uh, thank you. So this piece is called I Got You. And like I mentioned, Purcell's piece has gotten the most love and reactions. Well, this one has gotten the most action. Uh, so this is a response to our rice stone, or the money stones that you see here, where someone had uh, graffitied it, they had tagged on it. And uh, just the healing process of cleaning it and trying to get all the chemicals out and trying to use natural materials so that we don't damage the stone. And so um, I had wrote this post that actually got published in uh, media and uh, it kind of ended with I got you and it's me kind of reaching out to Tagger that, that hit the uh, rice stone, me being from that world too, graffiti art and tagging and, and writing and stuff, just uh, kind of reaching out and saying, you know, come to the museum. I want to let you know these these things you think you are okay to write on. They're very important things to us. They represent our ancestors. They represent the spirit, and uh, it's not just some inanimate piece. So I invite you to come to Kaim sit down and talk, you know, and I got you. And to Fran, didn't really like the I got you part, because, you know, she she comes from a place of love, but it doesn't sound like love, is what she always says. And so she said, the first thing I'll do is slap his face before then you can get him there. So, so anyways, um, this was the first piece to get some graffiti on. I was cleaning up out here and came back out here an hour later and someone had wrote here 
And so uh, I was able to clean it up real quick since since this is about graffiti, I wanted to do a graffiti style piece. And so you see the letterings, but then I, I featured the <laughs> I featured the rhinestone in here. And then the words I got you. And of course someone wrote on it. And then I think someone tried to steal it last Saturday because when I pulled in it was hanging crooked on the fence and when I came over here I noticed that it was completely off and the zip ties had been cut and then it was also over there and so I I think someone took it maybe took it home and got told hey where'd you get that you better go put it back and then they felt bad and put it back maybe that's what happened I don't know but whoever did that didn't take it, so we're able to put it back here and display it for people to check out. Oh, it's got questions. I'm trying to tell that this is uh, all part of the exhibit. So I wanted to do like an abstract piece, and I wanted to do a piece with uh, my son Leone. And so that's that's what we did here. And we just had fun with it. We just let the paint go and we did it at, at my house. And, you know, I just got to talk to him about art and the process. And so the way we did it, like he would paint one layer and then we'd let it dry. And then I'd paint another layer and then he'd come back and paint on top of that. And I'll talk. So we did a few rounds of that, and so that's what we ended up with. And then the morning before I brought it, we we're getting ready to take him to school, and I said, "Oh, we need to put. I want to put the words in there because we we wanted it to call it a uh, let it go." And uh, I said, "Well, you write it anywhere." He said, "Okay, I'm gonna put it here, here, and here." Because I was just thinking, "Oh, just just write it somewhere small." Of course, he wants to put it all over the place. But then he wrote his G backwards. And then he was like, oh, it's okay, I'll write another one. So then he started writing another one. And I was like, oh my gosh. I said, you know what, just put it up there. So he put another one. I was like, hey, you need I was just telling myself, bro, you need to let it go. Just let him do it. It's okay. It's abstract. It's a nice balance. Yeah. His friend Genesis Leota, he's a tattoo artist, uh, kind of specializes in Polynesian tattoos. And uh, he's been, uh, we've worked on a lot of different projects over the years with murals and, and, and things like that. And so um, he was going through some mental health issues. Um, and so when I saw that, you know, I reached out to him and invited him to be part of this piece too, or be part of the exhibit too. And so um, I dropped off this panel to him and he came by and picked up some paints. And, and so he's been doing this thing with the pineapples and the pineapple kind of represents the sun. And then with the leaves kind of representing water and then water kind of creating this that grid pattern that you see on uh, pineapples and then this, the water's like protecting kind of cooling down the sun too the two moth moths yeah the two moths that you see um, represent uh, the two kids that he's been taking care of and so with the water you know they're attracted to the light but the water kind of protects them from getting burned by the light. And the, the, the moths that you see in the background represent the lost children still looking for the light. And the black rays that you see represent God and, he's, and that God is beyond the light. And then the pattern that you see down there, the mountain patterns with the sunburst uh, in 
repetition, you, it represents that there's always a, a, a new day ahead, a new day to, to start over, to start, to start something new. So that's, that's his piece in, in response to what he's been going through and, and his own experiences. And, he was really happy to participate in this. He said this was the first piece he actually finished since his college days, so he really appreciated being part of this. Mon Monchilongo. Um, I got to meet her through our Couriers of Hope exhibit that we did uh, with Intertrend over at their uh, studio in uh, downtown, towards downtown, where we did uh, envelope art, and then they invited students to come out to view the exhibit and make their own envelope art, and then if they felt led to, they could reach out to the artist to do an exchange of pieces. And so Lucy had reached, so Lucy wanted to exchange one of my pieces, and so that's how we ended up meeting. And uh, her being a uh, Pacific Islander was a real cool connection. Her family's from Palau. And uh, so I invited her to participate in this, uh, in this exhibit too. She's a young high school student and uh, she was able to fit this in in her busy schedule with school and, and, and softball and and everything else she had going on. And so this, working with the theme of mental health and uh, Pacific Island culture, she created this piece and it, I, can't, I, I can't pronounce it for you, but in um, Palauan it means to uh, let it all out. And so you can see all the imagery that that's there with the water and the gold pattern just emanating from somebody. And uh, I dedicated this one to Auntie Fran. She had asked specifically to make a piece that said ask permission. But she was thinking I was going to put it in the back and I put it on the front. And, uh, it's just a very simple piece. Kind of see the spiral, another spiral inspired in there, and, and then this leaf pattern. It just says that's permission. We were having problems with uh, people hopping over the fence. They, they, we think to try to charge their cell phones. They were trying to look for power outlets and stuff kept hopping right here, so she wanted this piece to be right here. And it's just asking permission, just the, in general, like, you know, out of human decency and just even culturally, too. When you enter someone else's space, you know, to show respect and to ask permission. So, with all the pieces, we know that there's a chance they may get taken. So we included the note on the back and it says, this work of art was created with intentions of healing and well-being. May it bring joy and peace of mind to you wherever it may be. And then it has the artist's name in 2021 and then Pacific and uh, Pacific Island Ethnic Art Museum, Long Beach Park. So there's that note on the back of it, and the intention is that wherever, if it is taken, wherever it goes, if it's used to bring someone joy in their house on display, or whether it's used to build somebody's house, then, you know, it may go with that, with that joy and that peace. So that's our intention for this. So this one was dedicated to uh, Mrs. B. 
This is B was a lady who was living on the side of our museum. Um, and uh, I, that's when I met her. And she uh, was this lady. And the first thing I noticed from her was her hands. She was in a wheelchair. But her hands just had all this jewelry. And she just had this very, like, like special spirit about her. She said she was an artist. She didn't realize this was a museum, so she wanted to come visit once it opened. And, uh, you know, and I just, you know, it was cool to meet her and talk to her and just get to know her. And then one day she wasn't there anymore. And so people came by, they came by a few times and were like, hey, have you seen Mrs. B? And uh, they're like, we haven't seen her, we're worried about her. I just never, I had never seen her after that. But I guess also she was living here because before that, because Kiki and Mickey were working in the garden and they were sanding the, the Tilukai statue and all the dust was flying over here. And someone yelled from this side and said, hey, whatever you're doing is getting all over my house. And they didn't realize that I was here. And so they were talking to her but they couldn't see her. They were only just talking over the bushes and stuff. And so that's how they got to know who she was. And she said that uh, she won't be here for long. She's going to be leaving. She's going to be leaving to, uh, to New Orleans, which was very interesting because when I met her later, uh, you know, on the front, that's who she reminded me of. She looked like someone that was from New Orleans. You know, just kind of like almost. Yeah, she just had that vibe that, that I've seen from people out there. So you can see her hands in there. That's what left an impression for me with all the jewelry. And then the, the theme, the color theme of like Mardi Gras with purple and green and gold. And then kind of in an abstract way, the gold beads walking around in the leaves <laughs> people throwing bead necklaces out to each other. And I just wrote a little note for Mrs. B. This one's for her. So we just wanted to touch on all the different aspects that surround us in terms of like mental health and culture, Pacific Island culture and and um, art and, and just how, you know, our mental health, you know, affects us or how we experience it throughout our days and, and then just the different things, especially with our unhoused residents and even our local community here who may feel like not being comfortable going inside a museum, you know, and so the art is out here for people to experience, you know, yeah, yeah, it's accessible to, to everyone, you know, we have gang violence happening in our, in our neighborhoods around here, people getting shot, people getting killed, someone was killed here in the park last September, um, so that brings a lot of stress into the community, and then, um, have like, human trafficking happening in some of the, the motels around here, you know, and, and then just working class community just walking through, getting to work, waiting for the bus, you know, so just kind of responding to all that and giving people, you know, something nice to look at, you know? and then just kind of bringing motivation to come out here and help clean up a little bit. As opposed to, you know, before I wasn't really coming out here. And so it's just kind of making a connection, a, a stronger connection with the community. I'll come out here and talk to people every now and then. And a lot of them don't even know this is a museum, so it's cool to, to, to explain that to them. And so that's our exhibit. So we have five pieces on this side and four on, on the street side.